Now, you just made all these people's devices go off. <laughs> <laughs> it lit up, right? <laughs> Alexa, play Help Me with HIPAA. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the Help Me with HIPAA podcast, where HIPAA and humor collide to make learning fun. Your delightful hosts are Donna Grindle and David Sims. Relax. HIPAA help is on the way. Welcome to the Help Me with HIPAA podcast. My name is David Sims of HIPAA for MSPs. And joining me is Donna Grindle of Carden. Good afternoon, Donna. Hello, David. Episode 394. Oh, six I away. I know. And then we got to decide what we're going to do. <laughs> We see how much effort we put in. <laughs> we, we will decide, uh, you know, as we're hitting record, we will decide. <laughs> we're, we're open to suggestions, though. Feel free to send some. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're gonna we're gonna try to do it at uh, at the Price at Boot Camp, aren't we? I I I I don't know. I got to look that up. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. We're going to uh, do it at the same time we're doing the bourbon and breeches. That'll be interesting. Uh, ooh, that, that would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> we might be saying hip pa 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 and not a me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're talking big. I know you're afraid of brown water. I know. <laughs> I am definitely afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's what makes me more afraid. <laughs> <laughs> it's a setup as always yeah well i think i've had to help you home more than you've had to help me home <laughs> uh, uh, you needed to drive that's for sure <laughs> i could always wander on my own pretty well yep yep all right then so the price egg boot camp though yeah. that'd be a fun thing to do yet another reason to come to the price egg boot camp is who knows what we're going to be recording? <laughs> yeah, and uh, take take any opportunity to participate. We like to make the boot camp very interactive. We keep telling you that we're not kidding. And uh, when this comes out, though, uh, holy moly, uh, it'll be almost time. Goodness, mm -hmm. we'll be a, a month out from when we're going to be in. Louisville. Okay. The countdown is upon us. A ticking and a talking. So for those of you who don't know, we're having a three and a half day in-person live event, March 12, 13, 14, 15. You can find out more at prisecbootcamp.com because it's <sighs> privacy and security. And there will be a small contingency of people because we have a lot of stuff that we're doing and interacting with folks on. So it's not a Three, four, five hundred person event. This is wow. very small and intimate. Yeah, we have a limit that once we hit it, we're cutting off and very excited that, I mean, we've gotten actually inquiries, international inquiries. I know. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. I, well, it's I a lot that, interesting if you're us. You, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's for the people that have to deal with HIPAA outside the United States. I know. <laughs> it's it's always a thing. So, yeah. well, I think at last us. check, now don't don't quote me on this, but I think at last check we had like nineteen seats open. Not a, not a lot. Mm -mm. It was somewhere around there, actually. I mean, it was pretty close to that number. Yeah, I can't recall, so, but it so. was in that range of. Tw in my head, it's twenty. In your head, it's nineteen. I tend to round up. You're more specific. <laughs> <laughs> that's your nice way of saying i'm right <laughs> <laughs> i have no idea <laughs> but yeah. yeah so so get it get in there and get it going because there won't be many seats left or, or there aren't any many seats left so make sure you get in there and get that so again find out more price bootcamp.com we hope to see you there because it's gonna be a blast yeah blasting off that's right <laughs> <laughs> all right then so what else do we need to do before we get into the uh let's let's see. We'll vision. start with uh leave us a review. We need reviews. So do that. If you, if you want to pay it forward, that's one way to do it. As always, share us out. Thanks to our donors. We love you. And if you want to 
learn more about what Donna does on her day job when she's not being Batwoman, you can go to cardinhu.com and you can find me at hippoformsps.com. Spell it right or wrong, doesn't matter, it'll get you there. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so today we're going to be talking about an old attack and a new settlement because one just came out. Yeah. And I always like to preface our settlement discussions on the fact that when people say, I wish I knew what OCR was looking for. I wish I knew what they wanted. I don't understand HIPAA and what they're looking for. The settlements is where you find out all that juicy information. And you can see it change along the way. And they're all on the website. You can go see them or you could just look them all up because I think we've covered (laughs) almost every single one since we started the podcast. Yeah. We've covered, discussed what we can learn from it, those kind of things. So definitely use it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to cover some of that today. We'll definitely cover the settlement, but we're going to talk about what are the things that they are looking for? Because when they look at, when we look at a settlement, it says, so-and-so failed to do so-and-so. Then you're like, oh, well, if if they failed to do it, I probably should be doing it too. (laughs) You shouldn't be failing. Um, no, you should, <laughs> <laughs> you should be doing it. You should be doing it, not doing the failing do part. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If they fail to do it, don't fail to do it also. But yeah. <laughs> oh, geez. All right. So <laughs> you probably are failing to do it also. Maybe. But we'll cover that. You're in a loop. <laughs> You're in a loop. We need to pull you on out of that infinite loop. All right. Somebody do hit control C. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is Banner Health. Mm-hmm. Uh, an incident in 2016. And it, it's I don't I don't know. There there's there's so many things that I have questions as always, but we're gonna try to just work with what we know and not speculate. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when we talk about, if you don't know who Banner Health is, they are huge. They cover Arizona, and they are the number one employer in Arizona. Mm. And in northern Colorado. It's odd that it's not the southern part of Colorado, the northern part of Colorado. And for those of you who aren't into geography, the southern part touches, <laughs> not the northern part. So there's like a big chunk there in the middle, but it's a huge uh, environment and that's got to be amazingly complex to manage the cybersecurity and do the documentation you're supposed to do and those kind of things. Just like the small ones say, it's too hard for us to do that documentation. (laughs) We can't do it. They're saying it's too hard for us to do that documentation. We can't do it. And in both cases, the law is the same. There's a Mm. reason the law is exactly the same across all of them. Mm -hmm. So that is a pretty big group that got hit with a hacker. I mean, they had an infiltration by an attacker, it sounds like. In 2016... Six years later, we're getting the settlement. What? They had hackers back then? <laughs> back in those days? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it was before. It was that moment where we keep saying that's when it changed. Summer 2016. Everything started changing. hmm And we had been saying, hey, for a year we'd been doing this podcast. Hadn't we? Didn't we start 2015? Yeah. Sounds right. Dang. We're about to get six <laughs> years in May. That's another big thing. But anyway, 2016, that attack is what this settlement in 2023 is about. Wow. That's what I said. What was that, seven years? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. you know, we're at the very beginning of 2020, you know, and you don't yeah. know when the attack went. Uh, anyway. Yeah, we'll say six, but still. Uh, the, the point is, we we hear people sometimes like, show me where such and such happened. And I'm like, it, it, it takes so long to get these things through. <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I hear that sometimes from MSPs. Like, show me an MSP that got charged. I'm like, well, they just started looking at MSPs not that long ago. 
Right. <laughs> so, you know, will it, will they even get to the point where there's a settlement and, and it'll come out? Yeah, at some point, but. <laughs> and you got to realize that if you do certain things and, and, and you're able to respond appropriately during these investigations, they will close the matter mm-hmm. most of the time and it never makes the news. Yep. But basically what you need to do is put yourself on your own corrective action plan. <laughs> I thought and, you were going to say throw yourself on the sword. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of like that. But, uh, you know, we help folks get themselves. We hear, Here, we're going to make your own corrective action plan, and we present that as part of your response. And so... <laughs> it's that, like spank, spank yourself so, <laughs> so that your parents won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it mom dad i did this but i already spanked myself <laughs> we're good <laughs> i got the spoon after me i wonder if i ever came up to my parents with a corrective action plan <laughs> this is no. what i this is what i propose to you is the way you should punish me <laughs> well they have met you <laughs> at that time they had known you already and no way would i take it out you know <laughs> I'm sure they wouldn't, but in this big event, 2.81 million. So you want to just round it up to three since you're a rounder? I'm a rounder. (laughs) I was about to say, so basically we could say 3 million customers, 3 million patients involved. 2.81 million. So that's, that's gotta be a pretty large number uh, dollar wise. Mm-hmm. And in 2016, you think now if they had that many in 2016, how many they have today? Because I would wager that a lot of those acquisitions of hospitals and stuff across the state of Arizona and northern Colorado or Colorado, depending on what you choose, that they've added probably double the number of patients that they have on a file. Mm -hmm. But they definitely got the goods if they got that many involved. And uh, so that many resulted in $1.25 million payment and an agreement to a two-year corrective action plan. Okay. So, ow. And we have our obligatory quote, but there's some interesting stuff in the press release the quote and how it stated the the very last sentence. So when you read it, the last sentence is the one that really got my attention. There's a lot of things in the press release we don't normally see. And I, I think it's quite interesting the approach that they, how they've changed the approach to try to get people who only read the press release. And we always <laughs> say you got to read more mm-hmm. to get more into the press release that we pull out. So hit it, brother. Sure enough. So the director says, hackers continue to threaten the privacy and security of patient information held by healthcare organizations, including our nation's hospitals. It is imperative that hospitals and other covered entities and business associates be vigilant in taking robust steps to protect their systems, data, and records. And this begins with understanding their risks and taking action to prevent respond to and combat such cyber attacks. The Office for Civil Rights provides help and support to healthcare organizations to protect against cybersecurity threats and comply with their obligations under HIPAA security rule. Cybersecurity is on all of us, and we must take steps to protect our healthcare systems from these attacks. We've been trying to get the message out that it's time to flip the script. This is Mm -hmm. all of us. We do this to protect the patient safety and care for the patients in the healthcare systems. And cyber security is all of us. Mm -hmm. Everyone's on the cyber security team. I think we even did an episode about that. It's been a while, but. Yeah. If you're using cyber, then you're on the cyber security team. 
<laughs> That's right. I, I I I did that, and and I love to watch everybody. They're like, oh yeah, I knew that, and then you see them scribble real quick. Oh, <laughs> crap! If you touch an electronic device that is connected to anything, you're on the cybersecurity team. Period. Mm-hmm. If you yell Alexa, you're on the cybersecurity <laughs> team. Don't say that. Now you just made all these people's devices go off. <laughs> it lit up, right? <laughs> Alexa, play Help Me with HIPAA. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that was fun. Anyway, <laughs> it is good to see that cybersecurity is on all of us, that message, and, and I think they need to continue with that message. And another thing that's important that I don't think people understand, these settlement agreements are where you settle instead of having enforcement due to violations. Mm. OCR says these are potential, and I get to do the little rabbit ear, the air quotes, potential violations. And that's what a settlement always says is that, we decided to settle with them rather than saying they violated HIPAA. But if we were going to say they violated HIPAA, <laughs> this is what we would say they may have done to violate or not done. <laughs> and the again, the wording here, different than what yeah. we're used to seeing. Normally, we'd see the lack of an SRA. First thing we know, we know. When it's a security rule thing, almost always it's unless it's a like a one off scenario. If there's a huge data breach, lack of security where uh, uh, yeah. uh, risk analysis fail to that? conduct a proper and what is it? How do they usually do it? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> an accurate, accurate and, and thorough. thorough risk analysis. <laughs> yeah, fail to conduct an accurate and thorough risk analysis. That's what it usually says. But that's not what he said this time. I know. Yeah, I just shot past it trying to find it. So go ahead. Yeah. It's a uh, lack of an analysis to determine risks and vulnerabilities to EPHI across the organization. And that's not what we usually hear. No. <laughs> so maybe they're trying to say it in new ways. <laughs> yeah. You know? Listen differently. Listen differently. Yeah, and uh, insufficient monitoring of its health information systems activity to protect against a cyber attack failure to comma cyber attack comma failure to implement an authentication process to safeguard its EPHI information. So, what does that say, David? It's, they're not being monitored. <laughs> There's. Somebody said, are we doing monitoring? Yes. Check that off. We'll ask you again next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe the whole thing, like going back to the SRA, maybe they changed the wording because people always say, well, what is a security risk analysis or security risk assessment? Or what's the difference between the two? Or, <laughs> you know, it's the whole thing. Like, I don't know how to do it. Well, what is yeah. it? Well, there you go. That's what it is. It's an analysis to determine the risk and vulnerabilities to EPHI. <laughs> Across the organization is another key element. Yeah. So it's not like some of the other things like PCI where you can say, this one computer is in scope. For PCI compliance. <laughs> yeah. No, this is across your whole organization. And as you will find out, maybe even outside of the organization. Yes. And this one I found odd as far as the potential violation. I, I can't say that I've seen it, but it makes me wonder there must have been something transmitting in the clear. And, you know, a lot of times we'll see back then – you didn't do HTTPS. You weren't forced to do it ever back then. <laughs> Way in the olden days. <laughs> back there in the wild west. You weren't forced to do HTTPS on all websites. So that meant that you could be uh, sending things not uh, encrypted. They would be transmitted without being encrypted. Mm -hmm. It's the only thing I could come up with. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's clearly what it was here. Failure to have security measures in place to protect electronic protected health information from unauthorized access 
when it was being transmitted electronically. Yeah, so, I mean, it's just in transit encryption. Yeah. So failure to encrypt in transit. The only way I could figure out that would have been happening at a level that would allow the access, because it had to have been involved in the access to, for it to pop out like this, would be that they were using some internal websites without HTTPS in place, mm. which, you know, still gives me the heebie-jeebies because a lot of things do that. <laughs> you, know, you know, the internal devices that are self-signed encryption. Yeah. You know, and, uh, well, we're <laughs> not going to go down that path. That's a whole like, other story. The device is like, I'm good. Just ask me. Uh-huh. <laughs> But, you know, you have to go to it and it says this. Well, anyway, uh, it's advanced for you to continue. You better know what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> but that gets us to the uh, another thing that was very different. And uh, it was at the end because, you know, they get down and they give you all the links and they say everything. And here's here's the link to the settlement is always at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Right. So I know where to look for it, and there's always this, hey, if you think your rights are being violated, here's how to report it to OCR. But this time, there was a whole nother section above that. And I thought, huh, self. (laughs) Remember, (laughs) and I actually, I was like, I don't remember ever seeing this, and then I go back and look, even like last July, it wasn't in there. And you remember, we went through the executive uh, order on cybersecurity in, uh, I don't know, it's been 2021, maybe? I don't know. It's been like, it was a, a Biden executive order, and we did a whole episode reviewing what was in the executive order. But it was all about making sure that cybersecurity was a priority and not something that, oh, I don't know, you kick to the curb. (laughs) It's kind of why we do this show, (laughs) so it's not kick to the curb. But it said, and and so I'm expecting, I'm interested to see if the next time there's one with security, it has the exact same language because it was right above the standard language about your rights being violated and what to do. This, though, is geared towards the covered entities and business associate where the other is more towards patients. Uh, Cybersecurity incidents and data breaches continue to increase across all industries. 74% of the breaches reported to OCR in 2021 involved hacking or IT incidents. In the health sector, hacking is now the greatest threat to the privacy and security of protected health information. The Biden-Harris administration has brought a relentless focus to improving the United States cyber defenses, building a comprehensive approach to, quote, lock our digital doors, unquote, and taking aggressive action to strengthen and safeguard our nation's cybersecurity. OCR supports this call to action by offering an array of resources to help Healthcare organizations bolster their cybersecurity posture and comply with the HIPAA rules available at, and then it gives you a link for all of the security guidance that's available on the HHS website. They should hmm. be linking to the 405d.hhs.gov. I agree. <laughs> but I, I, I found that, first of all, lock our digital doors. I don't know. that. I don't know if that'll catch on, but... Maybe, but I also want to point out where they said 74% of the breaches, that's 74% of the breaches of 500 and over, I believe. Mm, Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, it could be all the breaches, but that makes the number even more scary. Mm, You know, because that would be, instead of like 600 and something, 74%, it'd be thousands 74%, because there are thousands of additional data breaches that are reported that never make the public list. Right. So, what do you think of that? I would say they probably need to 
instead of locking your digital door, maybe, you know, pull up your digital zipper. <laughs> Why do uh, I ask you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, you don't want things getting out. Jeez, oh, I don't even know why I ask. You're flying low, you're flying low. I know. You dropped your nader. Uh, <laughs> that just gave me a flashback to the strawberry and nanner. <laughs> so, but <laughs> it, it it is an interesting ad. That is trying to say, look, we can't mess around with this anymore. So we've we've included in here, it's we're all responsible for cybersecurity. Everybody is, and it's not going away, and it's really bad. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate that it happened to Banner Health in 2016, but these are still problems today, and they're not getting better. So that's why we're taking these actions. Yep. I, I don't know. Yeah. And it, it clearly says hacking and IT incidents are, you know, a big deal. You should be paying attention. Yeah. I mean, it is the number one thing that uh, causes them to, and used to, I just like to say, when we started this podcast, the number one thing back then was lost or stolen devices. It wasn't hacking. Well, it's because hacking is so easy now. Like you don't even know how to how to do it. You can just go rent. I know you just <laughs> you know, sign rent a up. hacker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can rent a hacker, or you know, become an affiliate, or they'll give you everything. It's like uh -huh. here, just download this to a USB drive and go plug it in somewhere, and we'll give you you know sixty percent share. <laughs> There's, it's just crazy. It's crazy yeah. what's happening out there, and it's getting more creative. But we talk about that over and over and over. Yeah. So that's, you know, it goes back to what we, we were talking about. We were on both on a 405D meeting earlier today and people still had that visual that hacking and hackers is a person sitting somewhere, you know, in a basement that can't find a full-time job. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that yeah. it hasn't clicked yet with people. The reality that this is an entirely new, I say new infrastructure of business. You know, this is, they have their own business help desk and how they take payments and how they run their business and hiring people. And I mean, it, it's, it, it's a massive industry. And their own business continuity and disaster recovery plan. Yeah. So it, it's not some guy sitting in the basement somewhere that still live with his mom and daddy when he's 30 or whatever, yeah. or some, you know, the, this is this is it, big business. <laughs> I, is, I, you know, when Eric said that today, I remember going, "This is not some pimply kid in mama's basement wearing a hoodie drinking Mountain Dew anymore." I, I know. You, were you watching me back then? Yeah, I was. <laughs> I, I was wondering if you were going to pick up on what I was putting down there. I didn't. I didn't have a basement, but I was doing the rest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. It's interesting to see that, that that part is changing and trying to put a different message out there. Hopefully, the press and those who report on those press releases will pick that up as well. But then we have the corrective action plan that's two years, two years. Hmm. And I don't, I, mm, I don't wish that on anybody. No. I will help you get on your own managed corrective action plan, but the corrective action plan where you have to report to OCR all the time, that's a lot more complicated. And I don't think a lot of business leaders understand that if you end up on these, you're required to sign off on these reports saying you are certain and you confirmed and you are taking personal responsibility to say what is in these reports is true and happening and i have personally confirmed it none of that happens today i'm sorry none of that happens today mm -mm. Mm -mm. so in the corrective action plan another thing that was in the press release 
was actually hitting the highlights of what the corrective action plan includes. And I thought, wow, because we always say, it it? It just says corrective action plan. And you got to go to the resolution agreement. And that's where the juice is. So it was nice to see it in there. And maybe it'll get people's attention as well. It's the same stuff we expect to see, though. <laughs> now, here, yeah, here's the verbiage that we always see. Yes. <laughs> Conduct an accurate and thorough risk analysis to determine the risk and vulnerabilities of electronic patient system data across the organization. Mm-hmm. And then? So then what do you do after that? What's step number two? If you don't know, (laughs) after you do the risk analysis, step two is to develop and implement a risk management plan to address identified risk and vulnerabilities to the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of EPHI. So step one, risk analysis. Step two, risk management plan based on, guess what? The risk analysis. (laughs) That's I mean, it. I can't, can't tell how many people say, yeah, I got a risk management plan, but I've never done a risk analysis. Well, then you did. don't have a risk management plan. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and that that's the one when we're doing our first assessment and I'm just flabbergasted by it or we're assessing a business associate and you get those answers. Sure, I have a risk management plan, but I didn't do a risk analysis. <laughs> okay. Well, let's start with a definition of what a risk management plan, because clearly what you yeah. think it is is not what it is because you didn't do part one. Yeah, you got a swag management plan. <laughs> swag. <laughs> so that is an important piece. And then the other thing we often see, policies and procedures. But this was very interesting because it's kind of like you didn't have policies and procedures for risk management because that's what they're focused on. And here's a a very specific thing that often people don't hear when we talk about the policies and procedures. You need a policy and procedure that defines you are going to do a risk analysis, when you're going to do it, how you're going to do it. And who's going to manage that and set the priorities under the risk management plan? I thought, huh, how about we do that? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So it's uh, develop. Often people will get a template and they'll stop at develop. Yep. We even have people that work with us to get policies and procedures. And then we're like, you're not done. (laughs) Yeah. You develop them. Step 1A, you're done. (laughs) You've done that one. (laughs) Then you implement them. What? I got to follow them? (laughs) Yeah. That's the thing. It's And it's often a discussion I have is sometimes you're better off not having policies and procedures than having policies and procedures you don't follow. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, there are different varying levels of willful neglect. But to go out of your way to get some templates to check a box and then not know what's in them and not follow them seems more willfully neglectable. (laughs) (laughs) That's a new term. I know. I make stuff up. I have to have at least one every now and then. that I. But they have to develop, implement, and distribute policies and procedures for a risk risk analysis, a risk management plan. The regular review of activity within their information systems, an authentication process to provide safeguards to data and records, and security measures to protect electronic protected health information from unauthorized access when it is being transmitted electronically. Oh, going back to the transmission piece. Right. So all the things that we would say could have been a violation. They are potential violations. We're going to want you to make sure you're not actually doing those violations. Yeah. And then we get to the last one. And I don't think, I still don't think people get this part. <laughs> what that two-year corrective action plan requires. Yeah. Go ahead. You, you lead that one because you can give it the proper punch. Uh, you should, you shall, not you shall. should, you shall, 
Yes. <laughs> Report to HHS within 30 days when workforce members fail to comply with the HIPAA security rule. Mm. So think about that. So your policies and procedures reflect the HIPAA security rule requirements. And if you have a workforce member that does not comply with your policies and procedures you got that, are, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> that are in the security rule, you have to notify HHS. We had an employee not follow policies and procedures. <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah. 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 There you go. Yeah. And you know their response is going to be, so what you going to do about that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, uh, I'm going to follow my policy and procedure on what I'm supposed to do about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to properly sanction them, <laughs> which is always the one that, you know, people do not want to follow the sanction policies. No. no, they'll Don't have a sanction good. policy. And in the big organizations, they have the HIPAA sanction policy, and then they have their official employee sanction policy, and everybody knows the one that's the employee sanction policy, and then people don't know what's in the HIPAA sanction policy. And now I'm not, which one do you follow? How do you go about that? And mm-hmm. then, you know, I don't want to terminate this employee. Well, they well, violated the rules that bad. That's when you have the people, though, that will write these things and they'll say, like every single thing that's something bad that somebody can do, it'll say, she'll be punishable up to and including termination. It's like, okay, but that that's a big, broad spectrum. Like, are you going to give me a day off or are you going to fire me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there was a case where an employee was fired due to HIPAA violation. And they won a lawsuit over that firing that's because their argument was, successfully I might add, that people violate HIPAA policies every day. And they don't get fired. But then I do this one and I get fired. How did I know this would be the one that would get me fired? (laughs) Yeah, because everything is up to and including (laughs) <laughs> right. So nobody's getting fired. So I don't see any that are going to get me fired. And so I just assume that that really doesn't happen. And that was the argument. And ever since I read that case, I tell people, you can't do that. That can't be your policy anymore. Because mm-hmm. you're going to end up in a mess. So you need to have a progressive policy. and And you can have... There has to be some parts that are subjective and some parts that are objective. Where you can't, we, you know, you can always add, this is less serious because the employee did these things. Like, this is the seriousness of what happened. But because they self-reported, immediately did X, Y, and Z, that, okay, now I'm going to make it not as severe. I'm going to take it down a notch. Or they tried to hide it. Now, now you're getting a spanking with a spoon. But mm-hmm. If we have to call Donna, you're getting fired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, but for the most part, it is a, a sketchy area if you are not consistently applying a sanctions policy for violations of your privacy and security policies. Well, for any policies. Because I've I've seen cases, I've read depositions where an employee said, literally, I know if you just keep your mouth shut, nothing will really happen. (laughs) So if you see somebody doing something, just don't say anything. And those random audits, you just say, come up with a reason that that happened. And they rarely will get one that's a problem. So you just keep your mouth shut. And nobody will bother you. Yeah, that's a fantastic culture of compliance right there. I know. And they're like, they trained me all the training. I had all the training. There's no more training they could give me. Yes, there is. The training that says, we take this seriously and we will sanction you. 
for failure to follow these policies and take them seriously. That's training yeah. people yet. Mm -hmm. So here's my last little piece. And this, I remember, God, it was a couple of years ago. And one of the first resolution agreement caps included, instead of saying conduct a thorough, you know, like that language, the bullet <laughs> that we mm -hmm. just saw in the press release used to be essentially what you would read in the cap. And then a couple of years ago, they changed it. So the cap started saying this. And now it's pretty consistent if you are supposed to do a risk analysis. And it's this big paragraph with a lot of words, which makes most people glaze over and stop when it says conduct uh, and complete an accurate, thorough, enterprise-wide analysis of security risk and vulnerabilities. And then a whole bunch of other words. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah. And then incorporate that in your risk analysis. So I broke it out into bullets. You can go to the show notes where you can really see what I'm talking about. But they break it out to say you must incorporate all, all electronic equipment, data systems, programs, and applications that are controlled, administered, owned, or shared by Banner or whoever's under the Corrective Action Plan, or its affiliates that Banner owns, controls, or manages, that contain, store, transmit, or receive Banner EPHI. That's so a lot I'm gonna easier. Include, yeah, I'm going <laughs> to include all of that. So if there's a question about what to include, go back to that list. And Banner will then include a complete inventory of all electronic equipment, data systems, off-site data storage facilities, and applications that contain or store EPHI from that list that we just gave you. And when you break it out like that, I would suggest you take that from any corrective action plan that included it, and you just put it in your definition of what a risk analysis should be, and then you break that down. And when you open your meeting for your risk analysis project, my team's going to kill me for saying this. They're like, now we <laughs> got to put that in ours. <laughs> <laughs> when you have that kickoff meeting, you get everybody on the same page and say, this is what it's required. OCR has provided this specific definition of what we should do for a risk analysis. And if we do that properly, everything after that is based on that, and we should be doing those properly. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like if you screw up the foundation, the house is not going to stand. True that. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one building that garage. <laughs> we, were just, we were just talking about what's going to happen if that dirt washes away. <laughs> it's going to be bad. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> calling Donna bring a shovel <laughs> uh, right you shovel your own brother <laughs> I have been for a long time <laughs> <laughs> true that <laughs> <laughs> alright so that's that's really what you need to look at is go pull this information share it with others use it in meetings or discussions or presentations however get the message out there's several really good ones in this one document. And you're right. They're telling you what to do for these specific things and mm -hmm. what's important. Yep. So can't say you didn't know. Because mm -hmm. if, you've, if you've listened this long, you know now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I should folks. know better than to drink water when I'm letting you <laughs> finish things up. All right. There you go. There's an the old attack on the new settlement. All in the same show. <laughs> <laughs> it's an old attack causing a new settlement. It's an old attack on a new settlement. <laughs> I know, this is this just Matt, I knew this title was too hard for you to work with. <laughs> <laughs> it's too many words. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a clean sentence. It's not <laughs> there's no <laughs> I know. I'm missing no a punctuation. conjunction. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that that just ties back into our four or five D meeting. Conjunction, junction. 
<laughs> All right, folks, thanks for listening today. And be sure to share us out on your favorite social media site. Give us a rating. Give us a review. Please, 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 please. Yeah, the <laughs> reviews. We aren't getting the reviews. And the reviews are what make you pop up at the top. And then these people start these new ones and they get people to review them because they're brand new. Mm-hmm. And they pop up above us and they don't last long. But because they're brand new, they stay up above us until somebody else does. Yep. You know, so we so, need your help. Yep. Leave us a review, please. <laughs> Don't make me beg, but I'm begging. <laughs> <laughs> if you leave us a review, we'll, we'll like gift you like a cat. <laughs> we'll send oh, you a kitten. Molly, Miss Molly. <laughs> Don't even start it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week. And remember, HIPAA is not about compliance. It's about patient care. You've been listening to the Help Me With HIPAA podcast, hosted by Donna Grendel and David Sims, the show created to help you with HIPAA. For more information or to ask us a question, visit our website at helpmewithhipaa.com. Neither Donna Grendel or David Sims are attorneys, and they do not offer binding legal advice concerning regulatory compliance. The information in this podcast should not be relied upon or construed as legal advice in any way. Consult your attorney for legal advice concerning compliance with HIPAA regulations.